The images were pure Disney, but the sound, the sound that made Fantasia, began in a Palo Alto garage, where Bill Hewlett and Dave Packard built their first product. When Bill and Dave sold their audio oscillator to Walt Disney Studios in 1938, they never guessed their first measuring instrument would launch a $25 billion company and an American phenomenon, Silicon Valley. Stanford University professor Fred Terman, the father of Silicon Valley, encouraged the two college chums to start their own enterprise. Fred Terman put it this way, he said you can see some of those people who have started these uh, firms uh, do not have very much uh, theoretical background. And said that you and Bill had uh, much more of a theoretical background, therefore you ought to be very successful at it. Well, I didn't really believe that at the time, but in any case, uh, that's what uh, made the decision for us that we were going to uh, start something on our own and try and build that up. Build it up they did, from the garage to a rented storefront to their own manufacturing facility, where a team of talented engineers dreamed up a high-speed frequency counter, which helped radio stations meet FCC requirements for frequency stability. The flying clock, which established international time standards. And then, an incredible breakthrough. Hewlett Packard was making calculators that uh, fit on a desktop, and uh, Bill had been thinking about miniaturization and the fact that it is possible to make things smaller, and basically went over and challenged the people in the laboratories to make one that he could drop into his shirt pocket. And this was kind of an outrageous idea at the time but by getting people to really stretch and go beyond what they thought was possible, and of course he got the HP 35, which really changed the world uh, in some very important ways. Changing the world with important ideas. At Hewlett Packard, invention and innovation were fundamental concepts. Well, if you look at this country from the very beginning, uh, it's, it's been very heavily based on ingenuity. We call it uh, Yankee uh, know-how or whatever, and you'll find that uh, it includes every, every kind of a, of a uh, machine from uh, farming, farming equipment and knitting equipment and all those things. And uh, that's really what made America great. We wanted the more innovative thought to come from our engineering staff. But each manager had so much to do, he couldn't take time off to be creative. Took some of these people, set them aside, and say, you are the HP laboratory, and your job is to look into anything you want. They were not, they were not burdened with the responsibility of uh, having to follow up on a product. And that re resulted in very successful, because now they could worry about being innovative and bringing out good new ideas and not be tied to the old ones. Innovation went beyond the product line. Bill Hewlett and Dave Packard invented a new corporate culture, and the HP Way set new standards for American industry. We are concerned with the health and interests of our employees, and a lot of things that you do arbitrary, like punching a time clock. Uh, we, did, we, we didn't have a time clock to punch. And then eventually we went towards flexible hours, so you could come to work any time between six and nine, you could just get your eight hours in. I have a typical example of where an arbitrary position that the company imposed on the employees was absolutely unnecessary. We have a profit sharing award. That profit sharing does not go to the top people in the company. It goes uniformly to everyone in the company, except on the janitor. Bill, Bill and I felt that, the, that everyone in the company can make a contribution, and if they uh, are given the opportunity to and some recognition for it, they will make a contribution. Today, the HP Way is international. In 16 nations around the world, Hewlett Packard makes products that meet Bill and Dave's standards for creativity and for quantity. The example they have set is one that increasingly, I think, is being emulated by American companies. And it's one of the reasons why in high technology field after high technology field, we're regaining market share from other foreign competitors. Well, Bill and Dave built a company that has an incredibly strong sense of values, but uh, their values were imparted in a way here that uh, 
I think is much stronger than you would find it in most companies. They've really constructed an environment where the focus is on the accomplishment, uh, not on exactly the way it gets done or what hours uh, uh, you are working. Probably it's the, the culture that they've left behind which is most important. A culture of trust, a culture that focuses on innovation and contribution. These are the things that will live even beyond Bill and Dave in this company.